Well, it's, I'll tell you, oh, me of little faith, we have a lot of folks out of town, but what a great looking crowd tonight on a Sunday evening, and it's just a blessing to have folks here. Uh, I was thinking as he was leading the singing, um, I, I visited with somebody yesterday that uh, hadn't really been to our church, but they've been watching online uh, since COVID, and uh, they, they were wondered why uh, Brother Matt's always up here singing, and they can't see the crowd, and they can't hear you because you're not on mic, and they couldn't figure out why he was waving his arms while he sang. They said, he's a great singer, but he has a really odd habit of moving his arms and stuff, uh, you know, because if you don't traditionally go to a Baptist church and see the arm waving and stuff, and I said, no, actually, there's people out there, and he's kind of guiding them along the way. So you never know what people are thinking uh, when they're watching you online because uh, they don't get the full picture of what's going on. Uh, we normally don't do announcements on Sunday night these days. We do all the thing at the end of the service when we turn off the online because we pray for our missionaries. Uh, but it's a special night tonight. We have a special guest with us. He's going to be preaching for us, and I wanted to introduce him. Also, it's good to have Rhonda Farrell uh, here, her sister Renee. They've come in from Colorado. Uh, we've been mentioning that we'll be doing a service tomorrow uh, for Greg, who worked for some uh, many years there in our sound booth. And, and Rhonda was here in the ministry, and uh, Haley grew up here. And, of course, uh, some fellow named Brad came and took her off and took her away. But her and Brad are here visiting as well, uh, Dunlap. And they're there in Kentucky, just kind of across the border there from West Virginia. And so it's good to have all of them with us. Uh, and be praying for them, as I said, uh, even though Greg passed away in November of last year, this is kind of a defining time for the family, and uh, pray that tomorrow God will be with all of that, and, and uh, remembering his life. We know we're going to see him again, but we want to celebrate his life, and we want to uh, give honor to the gospel that gives us the hope when we come in this moment in a time like that. And then I, I really haven't mentioned that uh, Wendy Posey's parents have come in for Virginia because of their granddaughter graduating, but it's amazing how much better Wendy behaves in church when her mom and dad come. So we're thankful for the services you've been here and settling her down for us. That is a blessing. And actually, uh, Brother Stan Roach and, and Betty are here, and of course, uh, that is Jake's uh, grandparents, and so uh, he's just coming to make sure the family name gets honored here in the preaching tonight. He's going to be, you know, so no pressure, Brother Jake, no pressure. Uh, but uh, Jake is going to come in his family, and they're going to sing uh, Jake's Center Rescue. We mentioned this this morning. Again, they're just seeking God's will. Uh, they've been in evangelism six, seven years. You can come on, start coming on up. And we're just seeking God's will. Nothing really official here. Just uh, said, hey, you come by, get to know us, uh, and we'll get to know you, and then we'll pray about what God may or may not have. So they're, they're evangelists. They travel. They preach in churches. So we're doing that, but we're also praying for them, that God will show them what's next for them, and we're praying for us, that God will show us what's next for us as a church. And if that has anything to go together, like I said, if the sky writing is in the sky, we'll know, amen. Uh, if not, we'll trust the Lord to tell us uh, one way or the other. So they're going to sing a couple songs, and then uh, Brother Jason going to come and preach the word of God for us. All right, it's good to be saved and uh, good to be in church. You know, it's always a scary thing when you get up here with a guitar. You never know if it's going to be in tune or not. And uh, so praise the Lord, she's in tune, and it's just good to be here tonight. Thank you, preacher, for the opportunity, and uh, we just look forward uh, to getting to go to church. Getting to go to church with y'all, it might help if I have the music here, and, uh, but we're going to try to sing this song here. Uh, my Lord's taking good care of me, all right? Here we go. Ready, Luke? Is the microphone on? All right, here we go. Nope. Hey, go ahead and turn his microphone on. There we go. All right, here we go. Ready, Luke? All right. Hard in my day, God mercy was with me all of the way. Gonna stay close by, need all my need. My Lord is taking good care of me. I'm never forsaken, I'm never alone. One day I'm moving to my brand new home. I'm blessed beyond me. Right, 
We're going to try to sing this next song. It's called I Stand Redeemed. How many of y'all are thankful that God saved you? And I'll tell you one of the greatest, it's all good. Uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. But I'll tell you one of my favorite verses in all of scripture is that verse of scripture, but God commendeth his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, he'd been a good God if he'd have just saved all the good peoples. We'd see it. Uh, but he saved a wretch like me and a sinner like you. And uh, he sure is a good God. We're going to try to sing this song, I Stand Redeemed. Go ahead, brother. We'll, uh... <clears throat> when I think of all my faults and all my failures, when I consider all the times I've let God die, Let me uh, introduce these, these, these good-looking folks. This is my wife, Amber, and uh, she's what makes this whole thing work, and uh, I appreciate her so much. And then this is our youngest, Sadie Bell. She's two years old. And then we have uh, Hayden. He's my oldest. We have Haley Rose and Luke. Uh, he's Mr. Dapper Dan over here making faces at you. So <laughs> praise the Lord for these guys. Yo. Hey, guys. and get our Bibles open this evening if you would and uh, let's get on over here to Deuteronomy chapter number 30 if you would we'll start there and uh, we'll jump a few other places this evening but I do want to say again thank you preacher uh, for the opportunity uh, to get to stand behind the pulpit that God has given you and uh, thank you to, to your wife and, and your girls for the good food that we had thank you so much and just the hospitality uh, you know we, we, we are amazed and, and grateful uh, just, just at your kindness, and um, I appreciate it so much. And uh, it's amazing. Gr growing up in church, you know, I, I, I'd uh, been a part of helping taking care of preachers, but I'll tell you, I sure am thankful for the people of God and uh, just your hospitality. Thank you so much. And uh, Deuteronomy chapter number thirty. It's good to see my grandparents here. I love them uh, so much, and thankful for them. And uh, y'all looking at one of my biggest heroes. Uh, both of them, my, my mamaw and my papa. I appreciate them so much. And, uh, and I'll tell you, they're just wonderful people. And um, I, I can never say thank you enough to the Lord uh, for what he's done in our family's life. 
um, but I just am appreciative tonight. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, let's all stand if you can, and let's read here uh, just a few verses. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter number 30, look with me in verse number 10 if you would, we'll start there. The Bible says, If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in the book of the law. And if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul. For this commandment which I commanded thee, uh, this day is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us in, uh, to heaven and bring it uh, unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thine heart that thou mayest do it. Jump on down with me for time's sake. Look with me there in verse number 19. The Bible says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you uh, that I have set before you uh, life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that uh, both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, uh, to give thee. Would you look with me at one, one other place in James chapter number 1, and uh, turn there if you would. I know it's a long time to stand, but if you would, I'd appreciate it. Uh, James chapter number 1. And look with me there in verse number 19. James chapter 1. Is this mine, preacher? Are we good here? All right, there we go. Praise the Lord. Amen. You kids don't worry. That's about four hours worth of preaching right there, so we're good. I'll drink it quickly. All right. Verse number 19, chapter 1. The Bible says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty... And continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Let's pray, and then we'll jump right into the message this evening. Our Father, Lord, I thank you uh, for your word and for your truth. And Lord, uh, this evening, Lord, I'm asking that you'd help us as only you can. Uh, God, how we need, Lord, not just a... Uh, wise word from a man, but God, how we need uh, your wisdom and your instruction, and God, your help, your touch. And Lord, would you help me as only you can. Lord, I know that the fear of man bringeth a snare, but the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And God, would you help me. Uh, Lord, would you empty me of sin and self and pride. And God, I yield myself to you. Would you help us tonight, Lord, as we need it. We love you. And we'll get, be careful to give you all the praise and glory and the honor that's due your holy name. Lord, I love you. Thank you for loving me, for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for my sin, but God, not for my sin only, for the sin of the whole world. Lord, how we love you. We thank you for this place, Lord. I've enjoyed getting to hear the history of this place, but Lord, I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to do here in the future. And God, I believe that your biggest plans are ahead. And Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Would you bless this place? Bless this dear people and this dear preacher and his family. God, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. As we look back to Deuteronomy chapter number 30, he makes a statement here, and he was speaking to a particular people, but I want you to understand that the choice as I uh, begin to uh, meditate and look at these verses here, uh, in verse number 19, he said that I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, and I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Uh, uh, therefore, he said, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. This evening I'd like to talk to you, uh, preach to you, if, if, if the Lord would help me, on the subject of choices. You know, choices are a big deal, and all the choices that we make in life are, 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 are affecting our lives, and not just 
our lives, but whether we choose life or not, that affects not, not only us, uh, but that, that affects our, our, our children. And it affects our children's children and under the fourth generation according to the scriptures. And as I began to look at these choices uh, and, and, and the Lord saying, uh, I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Would you please choose right? Would you choose life? You know, I think it's an amazing thing as, 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 as we think in our minds, and we won't go there for time's sake, and I'm sure all of you have heard this story. Uh, uh, you've been in church long enough. I mean, this is the Sunday night crowd, the cream of the crop, and, and uh, I, 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 I'm sure that all of you have heard that story about Adam and Eve and, and how that Adam and Eve, that they were uh, the two people. Uh, God created Adam and, and uh, from the dust of the earth, and he breathed in man's nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And uh, as, he, as, he, as, 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 as Adam was, was created and him and God began that journey together and he'd walk in the cool of the day with God. And Adam, you know, you think about it with me for just a sec. Adam didn't know what death was, what pain was, what bitterness or hurt or all the, the, the fruits of the flesh that we know, uh, the fruits of sin. And uh, Adam didn't know any of that. All that Adam knew was good because all that Adam knew was God and God's garden was, everything was good that God had created. And uh, so we all know the story that Eve was uh, taken, or a rib was taken from Adam. And, and uh, 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 Adam, uh, uh, his wife there, Eve, uh, she, was, she was made uh, by his rib that God put him to sleep and created Eve. And so it was not just Adam anymore. It wasn't good that man should be alone. But God brought this wonderful thing called woman into his life. And he brought Eve into Adam's life. And, uh, as, as we, and you all know the story uh, that there were two people there in the garden, Adam and Eve, and there were two trees uh, that we were going to take knowledge of or t pay attention to uh, this evening. And there were more than just two trees in that garden, but there were two very specific trees, that there was the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and then there was the tree uh, of life. And we all know the story that uh, Eve partook of the fruit, but then Adam, uh, and, and by the way, Eve was deceived. According to the scriptures, you don't need to turn there for time's sake, but 1 Timothy 2.14, listen to this. The Bible says, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. That's why we have such a verse as Romans 5.12, that wherefore as by one man sin. You know, I used to wonder about that as a kid. I'd hear Romans 5.12, that wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, so death passed upon all men for that all sin. Preacher, I, I, I remember as, as a preacher's kid growing up in church thinking, well, Lord, to me that don't make no sense because Eve, she ate the fruit. Why ain't her name in there? Because, listen, Eve was deceived. She was tricked. She was bamboozled. But Adam chose. Adam chose the tree over life as he would later on suffer and die. But we're going to look here in just a second at another Adam. He's the last Adam, the second Adam. He chose another tree over life as he'd suffer and as he'd die. And you know him by the name of Jesus Christ. But as we go through this, that there were uh, two uh, people in the garden there, and there were two trees, the tree of knowledge, a good and evil, and then there was, the t uh, uh, there was also a decision to be made. And we understand that Adam uh, chose the tree of of knowledge rather than the tree of life. As I began to look at, 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 at this passage in Deuteronomy 31, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, and as I began to think about Adam and Eve there in the garden and the choice that Adam made, and you know, Adam's choice, it was a big deal and it was a big choice. You know, I, I got to thinking about our choices and the choices that we make every single day and how we so quickly and, and flippantly we, we just make choices without even thinking about it. You know, the choices to obey God or the choices to disobey God, the choices to go to church or not go to church, the choices to listen to what the man of God has to say, what God has uh, spoken to the man of God and how he has given the man of God a message and how so often in my own life that I just rejected the message that God uh, had given our church, that God uh, was trying to help me with. But listen, I believe that the, the common thread that is what I believe to be the greatest if not the greatest power, one of the greatest powers that God has ever given man, but also one of the greatest dangers to mankind is the power given to us by God to choose. 
That God has given us such a, a great ability and a great power. You know, I got to thinking about Adam again and how God gave him the ability and the brilliance and the mind to choose the names of the animals. You know, can you imagine with me in, in your mind's eye this, this evening as, as Adam, he begins to name those animals. I don't know exactly how it all happened. And man, he was in a, a perfect state and it was just a, the most brilliant being that's ever walked the face of the planet, I believe. And uh, I mean, he had it all uh, in his mind. And uh, uh, he used a lot, whole lot more than I do, preacher. Uh, but you know, I got to think about Adam as he was naming those animals. Maybe, oh, Gabriel and Michael standing by God and, and uh, <laughs> Adam, he starts naming Hippopotamus. Gabe looks over, Lord, are you sure about this? I mean, giraffe, I don't know. A long, long clawed sloth. Lord, you're going to let this, this fellow name these animals? But God gave him the ability to choose the names of the animals. Whether Gabe liked them or Michael liked them or any of the angels liked them, God gave him the ability and gave him the obligation to choose what he wanted to name the animals. You know what God did not give him a choice on? What was good and evil. God never gave Adam and Eve a choice on what tree that they, uh, well, they had a choice to make. But listen, God had already chosen what was good and evil. And it wasn't for them to know good and evil. It was for them to choose life. But they rejected life, and, and Adam, he chose willingly that tree of knowledge. Listen, isn't that like us so many times? That, listen, we feel like, uh, like, like, like you know, uh, well, God, what, what, what choice do I need to make? What decision uh, do I need to come up with? And I feel like a lot of our life is spent making choices when the truth is, is that God more than likely has already made up his mind on the subject. He's probably already chosen what's good and evil. And it's not for us to know or to try to figure out what's good and evil. God has already told us in his word what is right and what is wrong. That listen, it, there's only one way to heaven and you're only going to go one way. It's by grace through faith through the Lord Jesus Christ. It, that, listen, I can choose a different way if I would like to. But God has already chosen the way to heaven. God has already chosen. Listen, I mean, what is the right path to take? He uh, said there in Jeremiah 16 to stand ye in the, in, in the way and see and ask for the old paths where's the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest in your souls. God has already chosen what is right and wrong. God has already deemed what is good and evil and listen I believe that our choice and our choice maker the only choice we ought to make is just choose life. Stop trying to figure everything out and just choose God's way. The Bible says there in James 1 be quick to hear and slow to speak. We're so quick to just run off of the mouth and make choices and, and make decisions instead of, well, God, what do you think about this decision? God, what do you, you know, I, when is the last time, if I could ask it to you like this, when's the last time that you included God in your thinking, in your, in your, in your decision making? Because so many of our decisions are, are, are made, are made so quickly and wrongly and we're not taking into account the fact that these decisions and these choices that we're making, Adam, your choice damned and separated all of mankind, not just you and your wife. Every single man, woman, boy, and girl was damned to a godless eternity in a place called hell because of one man's choice. And the choices that we make every single day, you know, I've heard preach my whole life, preacher. I've heard preach my whole life that uh, uh, preacher, he'd get to the invitation and he'd, he'd be preaching about the call of God or he'd be preaching a message, uh, you know, and, uh, 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 and, and, and boys would be surrendering to preach, you know, and, and he would say, you never know, uh, one of these boys might just be the next Man of God, that's God that God's going to use. They might just be the next vessel that God's going to use the pastor of this church, or they might just be the the the, the young man that's going to grow up to become a preacher that God's going to use to send revival to America. I mean, you just never know. I've often thought about the choices that I've made as a daddy already, and I've thought about the 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 the, the decisions that as I was a youth pastor there for six years in Alaska, the choices that that I would make. Uh, as a youth pastor to obey God or even sometimes uh, uh, to disobey God and to not yield to the Spirit of God when God was telling me to go, when God was telling me to do and I would not listen or heed to His Word. Listen, I'm telling you, the, the choices and the decisions that we're making, they're Adam and Eve, they're big. They're, they're, they're big choices, big decisions. I, I, I got to thinking about my... Uh, 
mom and dad, when I was a kid, as I was thinking about choices, <laughs> I was thinking about mom and dad when we lived in Alaska there. Uh, it was two hours for us to drive to the closest Walmart. And uh, we had a Safeway there. I think it was an Eagle when I was a kid, but uh, it's a Safeway now. And, and we would drive up there to Sam's Club and Walmart there in, in Anchorage. And uh, sometimes we'd stay the night there in, in, in the hotel next to the Walmart. And, uh, but as we'd go up there to Sam's Club, I was used to enjoy going in there as a kid because they had all those little vendors there on the sides. And uh, you could go to them things. And uh, us kids, we'd go and terrorize them things. And we'd go and they had the little sausages and the cheese and crackers and all them sorts of things. And you could run through those vendors. And, but what they was doing is they was trying to tempt people with them things into buying stuff they hadn't planned on buying. Well, every time that we went to shop, and even now that I'm a daddy, and, uh, and, and me and my wife, you know, my wife, she'll make a list, and, and she'll write down uh, everything that we need, and uh, she'll have that list. And my wife, she, she's a list person, and, but she has a list for everything. And, and, uh, but, but she'll have that shopping list, and, and mom and dad, they would have that as well. And we'd go in there intending to only buy what was on that list. But then we'd get walking around to them vendors and they'd have them little smoked sausages and they'd have those Polish sausages and them cheese filled, all that different kind of sausage and they'd have hamburgers and steaks and everything else. And it was amazing how they and we always seemed to end up coming out of them stores with more than what we had intended on, on coming out with. You know, I couldn't help but think about that list and thinking about this passage here in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 10 he said if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in the book of the law and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all of thine heart with all thy soul for this commandment which I commanded thee this day it's not hidden from thee neither is it far from thee he said in verse 14 but the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thine heart that thou mayest do it listen I believe that listen God has given us a list He's given us his word. And listen, it would be very beneficial to our spiritual wallet. It'd be very beneficial. It, it would behoove us to listen, listen to what the list has to say, and stop listening, trying to figure everything out ourselves. Well, do I need these extra sausage, uh, 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 the, 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 these extra bratwurst, or do I need this, this T-bone steak, or do I need this stuff that's not on the list? Listen, I might enjoy it, but if it's not on the list, listen, there's a reason it wasn't on the list more than likely because it wasn't in the budget. And listen, I'm here to tell you that, listen, I believe there's a lot of people that are walking through those vendors of life. The Bible says there's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. And so when we come to those vendors of temptation in our life, listen, like Adam did, and like these folks were here, that there was blessing and that there was cursing set before them therefore choose life listen how are we going to do that listen you're going to have to listen i believe stay with what god has already said i want you to look with me over in matthew chapter 4 and we'll, we'll land here tonight and i think this will kind of pull it all together matthew mark luke john matthew chapter number four and i want you i want you to look with me there at, at chapter four now i want to look at this last adam we, we looked at the first adam and we looked how uh, he made a choice right he went to the tree of knowledge rather than the tree of life. I want you to look at me there, look at me there in Matthew chapter 4. And I want you to see what the Lord Jesus Christ, how he dealt with uh, this choice to be made here. Uh, this temptation that he was dealing with. The Bible says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days... Now, now, now listen, this is the same devil that tempted the first Adam. Same devil. And even the temptation that he's going to bring to him, you know what, God, what, what, what Satan said to, or his name was uh, Satan back then, uh, Satan, what his temptation was to that first Adam, it was thou shalt be as gods knowing good and evil. You know, as good as Adam was, he was not a god. As good as Adam was, listen, he was not to be worshipped. As good as Adam was, it was still God's garden. And it was still God's law. And it was still what God had said. The first thing that Satan attacked was the word of God. Yea, hath God said? Well, yeah, God did say. God already did tell you, Adam, uh, what, what was good and evil and what you ought to do and what you ought not to do. Therefore, choose life. But he chose the uh, opposite. He chose knowledge. Verse 2, the Bible says, And when he had fasted 40 days, Jesus Christ here, when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. 
And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into an holy city, and sitteth him upon the pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh them up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Jesus saith, uh, uh, th th then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. That listen, I believe the example that the Lord was, was giving to us and leaving for us is this, that when we come to temptation, when we come to those vendors, listen, God has already written and God has already told us what is right and wrong and God has already deemed what is good and evil. So listen, stop trying to make all the choices in the world. Listen, stop trying to make a whole lot of choices at all. Listen, if I could take anything away from my children, I'd like to take their chooser away. If I could just dunk him in a baptistry and say, good, you're born again, I'd love to do that. If, if I could just take them and make them believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and if I could force them to do it, I'd love to do that. But God gave them a choice. You know, I had a preacher I, or a, a teenager in my youth group ask me uh, there uh, while I was there for six years. He, he asked me, and I thought it was a pretty good question. He said, Brother Jake, he said, why, why did God put that tree there in the garden? He said, if God didn't want us uh, to, to choose that tree, if God wanted us to choose right and choose life, then why did God put that in there? I said, you know, that's a pretty decent question. I'm going to go have to study that and try to figure that out. Went and talked to my preacher and went and read some stuff and went back to the scriptures. And, and uh, the answer that I got was this, that God, he didn't want us, he didn't, he didn't make us robots. God wanted us to choose and he wants us to choose him. Just like he wanted, listen, I believe Adam and Eve ought to chose him. Listen, we all, listen, with every choice that we make, our, our choice should be him. The Bible says there, he said, blessing and cursing is set before thee. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. Listen, I believe, first of all, listen, one of the great reasons why we ought to, listen, uh, 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 choose life and choose Christ is this, because we love him. Because we love him. The Bible says that, the Lord said that, if you love me, keep my commandments. That if you love me, that you'd keep my commandments. And listen, uh, I truly believe that if we would fall in love with God again and do things for the right reason, and do things for the right reason, so often the choices that we're making are not made out of the right motivation. And the motivation for what I do is what I believe. And the Bible says, He that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He's a reward of them that diligently seek Him. And we have to, listen, I believe, uh, uh, gain that relationship and that love uh, with God back again if it's gone. Then I believe, secondly, we ought to obey His voice. To obey His voice like Christ obeyed uh, the Word of God. Listen, that when I come to temptation and choices, God has already written what's right and wrong. You know, I got to thinking about uh, when, when I was younger, I was, me, me, and, me and my buddy, you know, I never got in, in trouble, preacher, with, with all my, I went to public school my whole life. I never got in trouble with, with, with the public school kids. I always got in trouble with the church kids. I don't know what it was. I got in trouble with my brother, and I got in trouble with church kids. Now, we didn't get in too much trouble, but I'll, I'll never forget this one time, Papa. Me, me, and, me and my buddy at church, we had these, these blueprints laid out. I mean, we was going to get away with this sin, and mom and daddy weren't going to find out. His parents weren't going to find out. I mean, we were in the youth group together, the leaders of the youth group. And, but, man, we was going to get away with this thing. And, and I'll never forget it. Me, me and my buddy were walking towards this door, this physical door. We were going to go through that door and, and, and do this thing. And, man, you know, it, it would have really hurt, hurt the name of our church. It would have hurt my daddy's heart. I know that. It would have hurt my mama. But I think above all else, it would have hurt God. And I'll never forget walking towards that door. And uh, my buddy was there. But you, you know who wasn't there? My preacher wasn't there. And my mama wasn't there. My daddy wasn't there. My youth pastor wasn't there to say, hey, let's do right together. But you know who was there? The God of heaven that indwells the believer. And the Spirit of God 
began to convict me as I was walking towards that door. I mean, it was the strangest thing. It was probably the first time I can remember uh, 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 as far back as I can think. But the Spirit of God convicted me. And I, I'll never forget, preacher, walking towards that door. And as I was walking towards that door, the Spirit of God began to bring back to my remembrance Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then, Jake? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? God began to convict me and take me to the woodshed. Boy, I've, I've saved you. I've saved you from hell and I've given you a good mama and a good daddy and I've given you grandparents on both sides, the best grandparents in the whole world, both of them independent, fundamental, right-wing, chicken-eating Baptist preachers and, and great mammals and you've had the best family in the world and I've given you and I've blessed you. I, I've given you so much, son. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin? Boy, you're dead to that sin. And I'm walking towards that door. That's called conviction. The Spirit of God began to convict me. And I'm telling you, the fear of God fell upon me. And I thought if I walked through that door, I said to my church buddy there, I said, if we go through that door, God's going to kill us. He said, no, he's not. I said, yes, devil, he is. He's going to kill us. And I'll never forget, I'll never forget turning away and walking away from that door. That's called repentance. And I turned away from that door and I, start, I ran back. You know, I didn't run back to my buddies at the church. I didn't run back to my buddies at school. I went straight to my preacher, who's my daddy. And I, I started just pouring it out to him. I was going to do this and going to do that. Did you do it? No, sir. He said, boy, he said, you didn't sin against me. You didn't sin against me in your heart. You sinned against God. You need to go get that right with the Lord. I'll never forget riding my, my bike over there to the church in Menford and, and uh, getting over there to the church and opening the door or getting in the door. And uh, I ran through the, 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 the foyer there and uh, all the lights were off. And I got there and I got, got on my knees there at the altar at the church and began to ask the Lord to forgive me and began to get right with God. But then, man, it, it turned into a few minutes to... To, man, it just seemed like time was flying by, but I, I ended up being there, I believe it was an hour and a half, two hours, something like that, as a, as a teenager just pouring my heart out to God and praying for the first time like I hadn't in a long time. You know, when you're walking with God and, 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 and living right, you know, you want to be around Daddy. But when, 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 you're, when your report card ain't what it ought to be, it, it's, it's very easy for us to go and hide in the room as soon as daddy comes home, you know. But you know what the truth of the matter is? Is all of us know what, what's on the report card. You, Dad, he used to tell me all the time, he'd ask his kids, he'd say, son, what's, what's going to be on your report card? Well, I don't know. And he'd say, well, you do know. You know whether or not you've done the work or not. I tell my son all the time, he plays baseball, and I said, son, I said, how do you think your team's going to do? You know, I've been watching them at practice all week, watching them lollygag and, and not doing what they're supposed to do. And he'd say, well, I think we're going to do all right. I'd say, son, have you guys put in the work to do all right? And then it came to game time, and all that lollygag and all that messing around during practice began to show during the game. You know what the truth of the matter is? When we all stand before the Lord, I think we all know whether or not he's going to say, well done, that good and faithful servant. We know whether or not we're right with God. We know whether or not we're walking with God. Listen, you, you, I, I could lie to my daddy the best that I could and lie to my grandparents and lie to my preacher and lie to my youth group and put on the face and play the game all that I wanted to. But at the end of the day, God knew every single thing, listen, about me. He knew every uh, intricate detail about me. He knows how many hairs are on my head and how many hairs are not on my head. He knows every single little detail of our life. And God knows, you know, I got to thinking about choices and I got to thinking about there, and I think it's Revelation 2 where God, he, he uh, is taking evaluation of those seven churches in Asia. And he says to all seven churches, it's interesting to me that he says to all seven churches, one of the first things out of God's mouth to all seven churches is Ephesus, I know thy works. Laodicea, I know thy works. Smyrna, I know thy works. He said to Thyatira, I know thy works. He said to Sardis, I know thy works. And then he's such a good God, he didn't just point out all the bad works that they were doing, but he points out the good stuff they was doing. And then he points out the bad. And then he points out the ugly. And then he gives them all a chance. He says this to all seven churches. He said, I know thy works. But then something he said to all seven churches as well, he'd say this, here what the Spirit saith unto the churches. 
Listen, Bible Baptist Church, Bible Baptist Temple, God knows. God knows our works. God knows the choices that we're making in secret and in public. God knows it all. And who are we to think that we're fooling anyone? One of these days, the one who we ought to love and fear, we're going to stand before him and give an account for the things done in this body, whether they be good or whether they be bad. God already knows. I want God to be pleased. I really want God to be pleased. I think that the only way to do that, according to the word of God, he says here that I've said before you, blessing and cursing, life and death. He said, therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Listen, I need to be like the Lord Jesus Christ, our great example, and choose life. Well, old devil, God's or, when temptation comes to me, God has already spoken. God has already said. You know, I, 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 I just feel like we, 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 are, we are constantly trying to make so many choices in our life. If we could just stop trying to make choices and ask God, God, what's, what's your choice? What choice have you... Because God has already chosen. You know, it was a good day in my life as a young person when I, when, when I, when I found that out, that God has already decided what he wants me to do with my life. God has already written in his word the way he wants me to act and he wants me to obey my parents and the Lord for this. I don't obey my parents just because they want me to obey or because I love them. I obey them because I love the Lord. And, 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 and I don't just go to church because that's what we're supposed to do and we're not to fail to assemble ourselves in the house of God and much more as you see the day approaching. I go to church because I love the Lord. I obey God because I, because I love him. That's, that's why we do what we do. We don't go because it gives us some kind of kick that we get to help other people on visitation or bring people to church. We go because we love the Lord. He said this, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest, listen, secondly, obey, obey, obey his voice. All seven of the churches, I know that works, hear. Hear what the Spirit's saying. You know what the Bible says? It says that we walk by faith and not by sight. Bible says that faith cometh by what church? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Bible says there in James 1, be quick to hear, slow to speak. You know, the, the choice to get angry, the choice to sound off, the choice to, well, I think, well, it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what I think about salvation. It matters what does us say to the Lord. It is written. You reject the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to die and go to hell. You reject so great a gift of salvation, deservingly, you'll die and go to hell from a place like this. They'll die and go to hell. There'll be no one that'll stand before God without excuse because they'll all at some point in time hear it and they'll all have an opportunity to accept or reject the Lord Jesus Christ. It is written. Our response, our choice, you know, it'd be a good thing if we could just get them words rolling out of our mouth regularly when temptation comes. Like it did when I was tempted there. Devil, it's already written. Temptation, it's already written. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. When the devil comes and, or our own wicked heart that's desperately wicked, when our own wicked heart, the devil, temptation, that when this world tempts us, the Bible says that, 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 that there is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. It might be uncommon to you, but it's common to man. You're not the first one that's ever gone through it, and you probably won't be the last. To go through whatever temptation that you're going through. Listen, just learn to obey. Just obey his voice. You know, in our, in our house, it wasn't... Growing up, we did not have a choice. There was no, but dad, you did, but dad, you're going to have a, you, 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 it ain't going to be a good thing. You're going to be talking, you know, you know it, it, it ain't going to be a good thing. It ain't going to work out for you. You know, I, 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 I wrote down, a, I'll say this and I'll be done. This past Mother's Day, we... My sister, she was putting this thing together for, for our mother. And it was, you know, what's your favorite memory with mom? And uh, what's your favorite thing about your mother? You know, those sorts of things. And 
I, I remember I, I, I wrote down about my mother. My, my, my favorite thing about my mother was her trust and obedience to my father. I, I, ne I never one time, and all the, all the cars my dad's given away because people need cars in the church or vans or whatever it was, I'd watch dad do that as a kid. I didn't know all the, all the details, but I'd watch dad do that. And, and you know, I mean, it, automatically all of his kids would look at mom. I don't know why, but we'd look at mom and see mom's reaction. But it was always just, I mean, maybe they talked about it behind doors, but she would say, okay. And uh, I told her, I said, mom, I said, if I could ever learn to obey and love the Lord like you obeyed and trusted dad, I'd be a great Christian. If we could ever just learn, God, God's, already, God's already chosen for the most part. He, he's already chosen what direction we ought to go. He's already chosen the way we ought to live. Listen, he's already he, he wants us to go to heaven. Th those of you that are in here, maybe you've been playing a game with your, with your church, with God, and, and, and you know that you're lost. You know that you're on your way to hell. God already knows, and you're not fooling anyone. You might be fooling me, I guess, but you ain't fooling God. I mean, God knows, and God's already written that, listen, it's appointed on men once to die, and after this, the judgment. And you're going to stand before God one of these days and give an account, and you're going to give an account, listen, and God's not going to compare me to you because our righteousness is as filthy rags. He's going to be comparing you to the Lord Jesus Christ and His holiness. The Bible says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched, with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, and yet without sin. That's why he was able to be that perfect spotless sacrifice as he was before the foundation of the world, because he was 100% God, and he was 100% man. He was the God man. Listen, he was tempted in all points alike as we are, and yet without sin, that he might be able to save us to the uttermost. But God's not going to make us, because he wants us to choose life. He's a pretty amazing God that he'd give us the choice. It was pretty amazing that God would let Adam choose what he wanted to name the animals. God lets us choose where we want to work and what we want to do with our life. But he says here, if you're going to choose anything, if you're going to choose life, verse 20, choose to love God. Seek God. Serve the Lord in the days of thy youth. Obey his voice, cleave unto him, for he is thy life. Notice he said, choose life. He is thy life and the length of thy days, and that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Now, I believe that land he was talking about, Canaan, it, 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 Canaan land, it wasn't, it, that's not a picture of heaven. I don't believe so. I believe it's a picture of the victorious Christian life. And God wants us to be victorious Christian soldiers. And God wants us, listen, to make the right choices. But at a certain point in time, we're going to have to step back and Stop trying to make so many decisions on our own, so many choices by ourselves, and say, like Christ said, listen here, temptation, it's already written. Listen here, choice, God's already made up his mind. It's, let's choose life. Let's choose the word, the word of life, the word of God. Let's choose, choose he who is life. With every head bowed and every eye closed, let's all stand to our feet if you would.